One group, led by Sterling and Maine, attacked the airfield at Bagush. They simply drove down rows of parked aircraft, blazing away with their Brownings and Vickers K machine guns, which were loaded with a mixture of incendiary, explosive and tracer rounds. Such was the surprise they achieved that not a single shot was fired at them. The other groups found their airfields more heavily guarded, but also managed to destroy some aircraft. At the end of July 1942, Sterling carried out a massed raid on Sidi Hanesh airfield near Fuka airfield with his jeeps. Forty aircraft were destroyed. The SAS's new tactics were clearly working. Following the success of its new tactics against Rommel's forces massed in front of El Alamein, the SAS was ordered back to its base at Kubrit in Egypt. Dramatic changes had just taken place in the command structure of the Middle East, following a visit in early August by Prime Minister Winston Churchill. He had decided that Auchinleck was exhausted and replaced him by General Sir Harold Alexander. General Bernard Montgomery was given command of the 8th Army. Sterling feared that as a result, the SAS might lose its independence. But he was able to meet Churchill and convince him of his plans to expand the SAS and launch more raids. The unit's future was therefore secure. Sterling was now ordered to raid the port of Benghazi once more to disrupt Rommel's supply line across the Mediterranean from Europe. He set up a forward base at Kufra, an oasis in southern Libya which had long been used by the LRDG. From there, his men set out on the 4th of September. The attack was a disaster. It was supposed to take place under cover of an RAF bombing raid on the port, but the raiders were late and it was almost over when they reached the town. The garrison was on full alert, and a fierce firefight developed, in which at least one jeep was set on fire. The SAS were forced to withdraw, and for the next two days, the team was repeatedly attacked from the air. 25 vehicles were destroyed. The remainder managed to reach Jalo, where they found enough fuel to get them back to Kufa. However, the SAS was not blamed for this failure, and at the end of September 1942, L Detachment was enlarged to become one SAS regiment with four combat squadrons. Sterling himself was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. Montgomery was now planning to take the offensive at El Alamein. The SAS role would be to attack Rommel's lines of communication. Throughout the subsequent battle at El Alamein and the pursuit of Rommel that followed, the SAS mounted a series of raids from its desert base at Kufra against the Axis lines of communication. One striking incident involved Private David Silito. During an attack on the railway near Sidi Barani, Silito's vehicle was shot up and he found himself alone with just a water bottle and compass. He set out on foot to rejoin his unit, covering 200 miles in eight days before being picked up by another SAS patrol. Such incidents were not publicized because of the SAS's obsession with secrecy, 
but rumors of its work and the toughness of men like Silito were spreading throughout the Eighth Army. As the pursuit of Rommel across Libya continued, a new campaign opened at the other end of North Africa. On the 8th of November 1942, Anglo-US forces landed in French Northwest Africa. They quickly subdued the Vichy French forces there, bringing Morocco and Algeria into the Allied camp. The Allies then advanced into Tunisia to engage the Axis troops, which were being hastily deployed from Europe. Hopes that Tunisia might be quickly secured proved false, and the Allies were faced with a winter campaign in the west of the country, while Montgomery closed in from the east. The SAS now began to operate in Tunisia, again concentrating on Rommel's supply lines as he withdrew from neighboring Libya. But disaster struck. Sterling and his party were lying up in some scrub when they were surrounded by Germans. After a firefight, some men were able to escape, but David Sterling was captured. The reputation of the Phantom Major, as the Germans now called him, had grown to such proportions that he was imprisoned in Colditz, the supposedly escape-proof castle where he spent the remainder of the war. The loss of David Sterling, the man who had founded and inspired the SAS, was a grievous blow. But the successes of the unit he had founded and the effect that its raids were having on the Germans and Italians meant that there was no question that it would continue its operations. In fact, while the campaign in Tunisia continued into 1943 and the Axis forces were being ground down, Sterling's capture led to a reorganization of the SAS. It was divided into two. One part became the Special Boat Squadron under the Earl Jellicoe, son of the Admiral who had commanded the British fleet at the Battle of Jutland in 1916. Paddy Main took command of the other, which was renamed the Special Raiding Squadron. Among the new recruits for Jellicoe's SBS was Lieutenant Anders Larsen, a Danish merchant seaman who arrived in Britain at the end of 1940. He had joined a secret commando unit, the small-scale raiding force, and had distinguished himself in a number of cross-channel raids. When this was disbanded, he was posted to the SBS. The Allies now turned across the Mediterranean. Sicily was invaded on the 10th of July. Paddy Main's SRS was ordered to take an Italian coastal battery before the main assault. They not only did this, but also captured another battery. 48 hours later, the SRS landed again and captured the town of Augusta, holding it until relieved by the main force. A new SAS unit, 2 SAS Regiment, was also involved in the invasion of Sicily. This had been formed in northwest Africa by David Sterling's brother, Bill. One section of two SAS was assigned to capture a prominent lighthouse on D-Day. This proved easy, as it turned out to be undefended. Another section of two SAS was parachuted in small groups to disrupt Axis communications, the SAS's original role. The drop, however, was scattered, and many of those taking part had not been in combat before. Little was achieved. In early September 1943, the SRS supported Montgomery's landings in the toe of Italy by capturing the town of Bagnara and holding it for three days until relief. This was followed by a more elaborate operation. 
Paddy Main's men landed with two commando units behind the German lines at Termoli on the Adriatic coast. Simultaneously, elements of two SAS landed at Taranto, led by Major Roy Farron, the cavalryman who was a veteran of the tank battles in the desert and the fighting on Crete.